dear viewers, welcome to another day with your fertility specialist. I'm your host on the show and my name is Esther Benjamin. So today I have uh, members of the IVF team of Alps Hospital and Diagnostics and one is Dr. Kenneth Agruda seated by my left and to his left is Nurse Ruth Ogogo. Welcome, it's so good to have you with us on set. Okay, so today we'll be talking about preparing for egg collection. Yes. So I'll start with Nurse Ruth. I always like to start with the ladies. I'm not being biased, Dr. Ken. It's fine. <laughs> All right. So Nurse Ruth, what instructions do you give to clients prior to egg collection process? Okay, so we take it that she's had a trigger shot. But before, before, before we get into trigger shot, let's just give them a little idea of what to expect before a collection. Yes, you have some of them complaining constantly, I'm having abdominal cramps, or you hear some of them saying I'm having severe headache, I'm nauseated. Yes, sometimes the hormonal medications they are on, and then due to high level of estrogen in the body, they can feel some of those symptoms that they are having. So it's not out of place when they feel this way. So it's, it's something that you shouldn't be scared when you're preparing for a collection and you're already having these processes. It's because of the medications and all that. Yeah. And then the high hormonal level too, that's what's causing that. So okay. now let's take it that her, her, the follicles are matured enough for trigger and then in preparation for egg collection. So now you're triggering this summer. You're giving her these instructions prior to the day of egg collection. Okay, so it means she takes a trigger shot. Collection of egg will be between 34 to 36 hours after the trigger, trigger injection. Shot, okay. So it means if she takes the injection, let's say give or take by 8 p.m. today, we would see her next tomorrow between 6 and 8 a.m. next tomorrow. So between 34 to 36 hours after trigger shot, egg collection is done. So you give her that instruction of the timing, she's coming to the hospital. Then you also prepare, my she should also be sedated. She should not eat before coming to the hospital. Okay, why is that? Yeah, because you know some of the medications that they will be given has this, the, the, to prevent aspiration, one of it, since she'll be sedated, Yes, it's just like going in for any surgical procedure. Usually, you say not eating because you, the person is sedated and you're preventing aspiration just in case. So that's why you would not want you want the burrow to be as free as possible, just to prevent any form of aspiration. And then, yes, some of these medications given can also have this nauseating effect, so it could make them throw up, and even from throwing up to aspiration can still happen. So yeah, this is some of the reason why you would not want them to that morning, just in case it's in the morning or if it's in the night. Yeah, some hours, if for instance it's in the night, you tell them some hours, the time you would want them to stop eating so that they are able to free up their bowel before then. So no food, then no perfume. Yes, why no yeah. perfume? Because they have high um, volatile organic compounds that could be detrimental to the um, gametes, that's to the egg, eggs, okay. and then yes, exactly. So. You would want them not to use perfume or very, all the strong body creams that have this very um, strong fragrance or perfume too with them. So you also advise them not to use strong body creams. No cream. perfumes, no makeups. Yes, exactly. Oh, wow. oh because of the chemical. Oh, you're, you're wondering. <laughs> they're not going to look like ghosts. <laughs> you get to see their refaces just for, that day. Just for a short time. Oh, you know, okay. Just for a short time. Because I know, well, there's some persons who cannot live without makeup or leave their house without makeup on and all. So so, so that time you have opportunity to see a real <laughs> <Yeah>, woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no makeup, no body creams. Yes. You know, I've seen people say that they don't even want to bathe because... Uh, <laughs> Please, they can have their mask. <laughs> That's an extreme. <laughs> you, you know, okay. women are very uh, interesting in some mm. form of uh, ways. You know, yeah. any information or instructions you give them, they tend to. Take it to the extreme. Yeah. You understand? So that's actually an extreme. <laughs> I've seen some who say they haven't used uh, 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 is it cream or lotion you call it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. From the day of embryo transfer yeah. to the day <laughs> of uh, of uh, of a uh, pregnancy, pregnancy test. test. <laughs> you know? So I wonder where that comes from. Some but yeah. people call you. Can I start using perfume now? <laughs> oh, oh sure. So uh, 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 sometimes I I think that's taking it too far mm. but sometimes my mind also follow them that far so and i wonder okay okay now they they decide to avoid makeups mm. for the entire duration of waiting for pregnancy tests yes. to be mm. carried out is there any logic in it mm. and i begin to see sense in it 
you know okay. there are some of these makeups actually that have heavy, heavy metals in yeah. them they have heavy metals in mm. them mercury and all of those uh, things that get absorbed into the, the body, body. Yeah. you know and um, uh, parabenzene and all of that wow. they just all in those makeups so even after embryo transfer sometimes in as much as it's uh, detrimental to the normal human body I think it's also wise to extrapolate it that it could be detrimental to the primitive embryonic cells mm. that are deposited in the human body. We don't give that instructions though, but this is my mind following them that far. Yeah. You know, sometimes when they take things far, it may just be uh, <laughs> for their own good. Yeah, exactly. Especially someone that is addicted to heavy makeup. Oh, you know? sure. Yes. Okay, so then it's also good to know that um, for those that their husbands are around, for those that don't have a frozen sperm, it's good to let the woman know that that day she's coming for egg collection is also when mm. she brings her sperm. Oh, okay. As a matter of fact, if she doesn't bring the sperm, what exactly are we going to use to fertilize yeah, the so egg? Does so does the sperm have to be brought that day of yes. egg collection? It should, except in, you know, you always have, um, you always have exceptions. There are some that feel they can't make it that day and then they would want to come in before time, possibly for, to freeze, or um, that's for the embryologist to actually decide they would be coming with the sperm. But the most important thing to note is on that day of egg collection, that's when the sperm is needed. So it doesn't matter if she's bringing the sperm or if her husband is bringing that day or if it's already been brought before mm. and the embryologists have actually preserved it against that day. But once egg collection is being done, yes, the sperm would be needed that same day. So as um, it, it means that if you're preparing this woman for egg collection, you should also give her a sperm pot or something that she would, her husband produce the sperm and then yes, yeah, sometimes they would want to come and even produce in the hospital because they are like scared and like, okay, uh, will he not, will he not die before yeah. then? You know, yeah. <laughs> will he not die before then? But yes, they could actually bring the sperm from their various houses. So yeah, as a woman watching, once they, once your, um, the container or whatever container is given to you for your husband's sperm, you could produce with your husband that, Oh man, yes, you get to hear a lot of them asking questions. How would they produce? Yes, there are different ways that they could produce. <laughs> now we're in for it. Now we're in for a lecture, right? All right, let's so, listen. <laughs> so yes, you know, they will ask you. Sometimes they ask this question. Okay, so how will my husband produce? And then you get to wonder. This is someone has actually done the seminar analysis before. So is there another way that he should have produced? Yes. So. Masturbation could be a way to produce for the husband. Okay. Yes, and yes, sometimes some men could still find it difficult. The woman could help. There are various means that she knows she could help to arouse her husband so he could achieve ejaculation to be able to get the sperm. So whichever means works for them. Well, we're talking a lot about preparing for egg collection. So we'll not and if no means into... work, please, intercourse is permitted. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so intercourse exactly. is so permitted. It's good that they know because sometimes they're, 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 they've been trying masturbation, it's not working. Yes, intercourse is permitted. Different forms, yes, you could do it in non spermicidal condom, you could do withdrawal method, yes, whichever way permits. But as long as it's good that you have I, a guide. Sorry, I think you're too fast mentioning the non spermicidal condom. Okay. Please <laughs> take it slowly. <laughs> non spermicidal <laughs> Condom, condoms. not any, not any condom. Condom, okay. yes. You understand? Mm. These are condoms. Uh, most condoms have uh, uh, chemicals that kill the sperm. Okay? okay. And then if you if you mis if you use it, I mean, out of mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't just kill the sperms. It could bring it would be a source of contamination to the entire laboratory. Oh wow! Exactly, because this and the embryologist uh, handles the sperms. And then we don't want to assume there is there wouldn't be any risk for for for, for expanded mm -hmm. uh, effect, yeah. uh, which could be far-reaching, you know. So non spermicidal condoms. condoms. So hope that rings a bell, and yeah. I hope you take a note. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you don't worry. So yes, the, the main goal is this. Yes, as a woman, you're preparing for a collection. Should it be your husband is having difficulty with producing? It's also good that you also carry your fertility um, specialist along so they could guide you on also better ways that could achieve production of the sperm. And yes, so let's take it that air collection is done. Yes, they usually have that fear that it could be painful. Well, I know you've actually you've given that question to Dr. Ken. So let me just say, for what should not be strange after air collection and a woman could expect, yes, they could have, they could have some bloating as also nothing to worry, just that they should, they should try to be mobile and then also try to take roots just to ease the bloating all these are some of the symptoms they could also have cramps too okay. after a collection yes and then sometimes when you get severe for someone that had uh, multiple follicular response when you get severe and they are 
maybe tilt in towards um, what we call ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Yes, they could, um, they would need to be observed just to try to um, reduce the symptoms as much as possible. So there's just so much to talk about when it comes to instructions to demand. The questions are never ending. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. So that's what it is. Okay, so this question, Dr. Ken, so does all the egg retrieved guarantee pregnancy at the end of the day? Oh, well, you know, in an IVF treatment cycle where eggs are retrieved, the eggs are usually uh, of different grades and mm. qualities. And, you know, sometimes when uh, the, the, we, you retrieve so many eggs, you'll be expecting to hear that uh, all the eggs are M2, metaphase 2 eggs. Mm. And then you hear, you, you have these... Uh, grouchy looking <laughs> embryologists <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> always carrying a very uh, unhealthy news <laughs> hey ken you have 10 eggs <laughs> out of the 10 eggs uh four out of the 10 are at metaphase two uh four other eggs are empty shells <laughs> or germinal vesicles and uh two eggs uh at metaphase one m1 oh. uh I said, oh, I said god not again <laughs> So now, even the 10 <laughs> eggs I got are not good not enough good for enough. this treatment. Yes, what are we yeah. talking about? Yeah, so the, all the eggs are not always mm -hmm. in the good form for pregnancy. And the reason is this. Uh, well, they are stimulated eggs, you know, mm -hmm. and then depending on the age of a woman, even when everything is okay, when a woman is about 37, 37 years, for instance, 70% mm -hmm. of eggs that she produces are are poor or bad eggs only 30 percent are okay mm -hmm. so chances are that you're likely going to have more poorer eggs than the good eggs i don't know if the embryologists that are watching or listening <laughs> will agree with what i'm saying mm -hmm. i've been in this field for as long as 17 years now wow, you know and so um uh, this is the language that the embryologists and i'm talking about embryologists that are trained across the world who have seen all kinds of eggs you know, I can't describe the words they use often because it may be too it may be uh, too advanced for my population that are listening. Hey, these eggs are looking uh, black. Mm -hmm. These eggs are, are looking uh, shrunken. The, the cytoplasm has shrunken, mm -hmm. so I don't think they are normal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, not all the eggs are good enough to produce pregnancy in a nutshell, mm -hmm. and that applies to any woman. Mm -hmm. It was. For 17 years of doing an IVF treatment, for, for me, it was in only one situation that we had a woman who produced 36 to 37 eggs. Wow. And then the embryologist said, surprisingly, all these eggs are That's metaphase to eggs. Incredible. And we all shouted in the operating room that day. I was like, man, what's happening? Where did she come from? <laughs> is she from it? <laughs> from a, mass? She's a golden goose. <laughs> golden goose. <laughs> you know, where, where on it? And of course, she got pregnant. Oh, wow. Yeah, at the end of the day, she got pregnant. You know, So all the eggs are good. We haven't seen hmm. situations like that. Yeah, you could have a good number of the eggs are fine, but more often than not, all the eggs are not. A good number of the eggs may not be in good condition. So they may not all produce pregnancy. Only a few of them could produce pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And remember, pregnancy is not only the function of eggs. Uh. The sperms are there. She could produce every metaphase two eggs. eggs yeah. Usually the eggs are as crystal. You know crystals? Yeah. Uh. Like glass? Yeah. That's how the eggs look like. That's the color of a good wow. egg. Okay, They may all be like that. And then you have the husbands have lame looking sperms. <laughs> yeah. That's just not good enough. Yeah. So it may not also produce pregnancy. Then these eggs may be good and the sperms may be like uh, from some extraterrestrial <laughs> being like me. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and then the endometrium, the lining of the womb may have been scarred for some reasons mm. and still pregnancy wouldn't just happen. So what makes for pregnancy in IVF goes beyond the eggs, yeah. goes beyond the, the sperms, sperms, goes beyond the endometrium, yeah. and sometimes all of these things may be, may, may be okay, but the genetics of the eggs and sperms may not be perfect enough yeah. to make pregnancy to happen. Yeah. But yeah, not to despair. Sometimes when the eggs are not good and the sperms are not good and embryo transfer is done, the body is just like a working machine. Yeah. It corrects some of those 
genetic abnormalities and makes the eggs and sperms good for pregnancy to happen. But you can never tell. Mm -hmm. It yeah. just happens. Mm -hmm. You know, so not all the eggs are good. And by the way, the egg collection process is not painful because they are usually yeah. sedated. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're usually sedated. And so um, uh, when the sedation is worn, I mean, as worn out, you know, and um, they are given pain reliefs, okay? okay? Pain reliefs that are friendly with 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 intention for pregnancy, pregnancy. Okay? okay? And other medications. So yeah, it's not painful. Not all the eggs are good. Not all the eggs can bring about pregnancy. But of course, IVF guarantees more chances of pregnancy than spontaneous conception. So there you have it, viewers. That's too much we can take for now. Till we come again. Thank you.